Welcome to The Liberating Secret with your host, author and teacher, Sylvia Pierce. The Liberating Secret is dedicated to revealing the mystery of the gospel, which is Christ in you, the only hope of glory. Let's join Sylvia Pierce for today's lesson. Welcome to The Liberating Secret. My name is Sylvia Pierce, and I'm so glad to be with you today. I'm doing a series, and this series is called The Liberating Secret, and I've been giving you the secrets of The Liberating Secret. I mean, what what secrets that maybe the body of Christ don't know yet, that need to know, that we need to understand about our humanity, and that's why the Bible is saying in chapter 6 that if you're under if you're still under the law sin will have dominion over you that's a promise do you realize that sin will have dominion over you if you're still under the law well why would i be under an outer requirement and that's really what the law is an outer requirement i mean how many outer requirements do you put upon yourself uh, to be right with God. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't put an outer requirement. I've got to get my child to the school at a certain time. I've got to uh, do this a certain time, a certain time. I'm not saying that we're just absolutely uh, timeless and we just float around and just do what we want to do. No, I'm talking about the difference between when you're resting and living from the Spirit of God, life is going to be so much easier than the grind of trying to fit everything into t- into the timing, you know, the timing problem, and then the require the things that I'm responsible for. You see, we can live our life in stress, or we can live our life in rest. Now, if you're a Christian, the Bible talks about moving into His rest, in the rest that Christ has provided for you through his death, burial, and resurrection. Now, if you're living from a restful state, you're living by the Spirit. You're not living by your flesh. If you're trying to figure it all out and trying to make it all work and really and truly trying to make everybody around you miserable while you're doing it, you see, you're living in stress. You're not living in rest. And basically, because you're still deceived about your humanity, you think your humanity is can perform and be right and be good and and be righteous, really, apart from the righteous one that lives inside of us. That's the real problem right there. And the lies that are still in our minds, you see, from the old, from our old master, we were raised with these lies, and so they're still deep in our consciousness. That we're, that's, I'm an independent self and I'm the one responsible. I'm the one that has to do it. I'm the only one. I'm me, I, 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 me, me, me. Try, try, try. Does that describe you? Well, then listen up. You're the one that needs the liberating secret. Surely you do. Now, what we need to know is that through the cross, we can have a change of consciousness because it's all about consciousness, what I think. My thinking is stinking because I'm still thinking that the human me is a performer instead of just a simple receiver. So I like to say we're receivers, not achievers. You see, when you receive, then what do you receive? Well, you constantly receive the truth, which is that you don't live any longer. Christ lives in you. He's the one responsible. He's the one that's going to make it happen. You see, our minds have to be transformed from self-consciousness and sin consciousness to Christ consciousness. You know, with a Christ conscious mind, you know, you're going to be praising the Lord all the time, even when things don't work out right. You'll learn the secret of how and the power of how you can praise God in the midst of anything that happens to you. And it lifts you above it. It absolutely lifts you right into the spirit. There's a powerful, powerful way to really be in a restful state just by simple praise, praise. All right, I have a list of what we need uh, 
what we need to what needs to be changed in us in our thinking. Now, first of all, let me read in Hebrews chapter nine, verse fourteen. This is uh, this is talking about the difference between the old covenant and the new covenant. So it's saying, how much more in the new covenant shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God. Now listen to this. Purge your consciousness from dead works. That means from you trying and striving and not getting anywhere really to serving the living God. How do we serve the living God? How do we move from dead works to serve the living God? You do it with a new consciousness, with a new mind. You've got to know that you have the mind of the Spirit. There is a difference between the mind of the flesh, which is striving and performance-based, and the mind of the Spirit, which is resting and spirit and life uh, conscious, you see. Okay, I'm going to read you what, what, uh, what I wrote down here. A, reverse, a radical reversal in fallen man's consciousness. This is really just in saved man's consciousness and a man that's, person that's been redeemed. We have to move from the mind of the flesh and know the difference to the mind of the spirit. That's the new covenant. From outer reality, always judging everything by appearances, to the spirit reality, how God th sees everything. We need to move from the Old Testament requirements to the ease and spirit of the New Testament. We need to, uh, which from the Old Testament, the laws were written on tablets, on tablets of stone. Now our laws are written in our heart. Nobody has to tell you what to do or not do in the spirit. You know it would be sin to kill somebody. It would be sin to have adultery. It would be sin, but you already know that. And you know what? The new nature in you doesn't want that. Doesn't want it. You see, doesn't really want it. And you've got to know the difference between temptation and sin. We're going to talk about that too. All right. We move from taught the traditions of the fathers. That's exactly what Paul says. By taught by spirit revelation. Good grief. We Christians we are being taught by everybody except by the Spirit. You know that the Holy Spirit is within you, and Jesus promised that the Spirit would teach you all things. You don't have to be taught of me or any man or anybody else. Be taught by the Spirit. Be a noble Berean. I always love that verse in Acts. And we have to move from law-bound requirements to free grace and truth. We move from the law of sin and death to the law of spirit and life that sets us free from the law of sin and death. We need to move from depending on ourselves to depending on Christ in me. We need to move from flesh consciousness to God and Christ and other conscious. I always think, see, most of the time when you're living as a flesh person, you're just thinking about yourself all the time. Self-interest, what I have to do, it's I, I, I is the main person you're thinking about all the time. It's flesh consciousness, you see. Okay, uh, we have to move from striving to achieve to resting in the finished work of Christ. We need to move from human strength to human weakness. Okay, now when we're weak, then we are strong. See, we're trying to be the strength. Christ is the strength in, in our weak vessel. So go ahead and be weak and be okay with it. Well, that's pretty hard. Most of us don't like weakness. We hate it. We say, well, that's being lazy or, you know, I'm sure I can do it. That's just, you know, a cop out. Well, it says in 2 Corinthians that Jesus operated that way. He was weak in himself and powerful in the spirit. So know that. Read 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and 13, and you're going to see the whole meaning of how the human, it really, all a vessel can be is a weak vessel, for heaven's sakes. <coughs> we move from a stony, hard heart full of pride and full of self-achievement to a broken heart full of mercy. Sometimes God has to break our heart because we're so full 
of our own self and what we want and I'm going to try harder and everybody's failing me and nobody's doing right outside of me. You see, we need to be broken sometimes. And I mean, God certainly did that to me. He broke my heart and he broke my heart. He broke that stony heart off of me and gave him his heart of mercy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for that. I'll always be thankful for that. And, and I write about it in The Treasures of Darkness, if you want to know my story. He moves us from flesh works to the Holy Spirit rest. He mo moves us from independent me, sin consciousness, to Christ consciousness. See, we need a new mind. We need the mind of the Spirit. Wow. Now, the Bible says we have the mind of the Spirit, or are you functioning from the mind of the Spirit? That's the question. The question is not that we don't have these things. The question is, are we functioning from them, or are we a dysfunctional family of God? I think most of us are a dysfunctional family. We're not functioning from the right source. We're trying to draw from our flesh source. All right, we, had, we need to move from lack, everything's lack, and needy. Needy, 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 lack, 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 to infinite supply, because this is where the supply is. If you live from your flesh, you're always going to be needy and lacking. If you live from your spirit, you're going to be full. Even Jesus says, I have uh, food you know not of. And, you know, he didn't live as a needy person, never did. He, he lived as a fully supplied person, and that's the way we're to live. Okay, it, we need to move from our soul living, just or our, we're living from what I think and how I feel and uh, my emotions and, and my logic and how I feel and think. You see, I'm living from that instead of spirit joined to the Lord. And I, and I need to move from living from my own understanding to lean not on your own understanding. Let me tell you what, we're me, moving into Proverbs. <laughs> The wisdom of God. I mean, this is what's lacking in the body of Christ. The wisdom of God is the mind of Christ. The wisdom of God is the mind of Christ. All right. If we would go to 2 Corinthians, let me just take a little sidestep, which I always love to do, and tell you about the Corinthians. The Corinthians, Paul says, were still carnal. Now, that means fleshly. Well, did they have the Holy Spirit? Oh, yes, they had the Holy Spirit. Actually, they were operating from the Holy Spirit. They were. They had spiritual gifts, and uh, they knew the Holy Spirit, but yet they were still carnal. How so? Well, they were still divided. They were still divided among themselves. Well, you say it your way, but I say it my way. I'm right, and you're wrong, and uh, you're of this person, and I'm of that person, and I'm, I've got the right, you've got the wrong. I mean, for heaven's sakes, is this not what the body of Christ is today? We might know the Holy Spirit, be, even in speaking in tongues in the Spirit, but yet still carnal. Okay, now what does Paul say? Paul is saying, the flesh profits nothing. You're still fleshly. You're still operating as a flesh person. The problem is you're not functioning from what you have in Christ, which is the mind of Christ. You're leaning on your own understanding. The Bible says in Proverbs, lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. You see, he will direct your way. This is so simple. I, I learned that verse, I think, when I was first saved. Okay, Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Yes, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. Okay, trust in the Lord with what? All your heart. So what's your heart? That's where Jesus lives. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. That's the problem in Christianity. We're leaning on our own understanding, how to prosper, how to be successful, how to live the Christian life. It's a how-to. We don't really have a how-to. God's not going to give you a how-to. He's going to give you a how-who, and that who is Jesus. <laughs> wow. I love to say that's a Dr. Seuss thing. Actually, I have a series by my good friend Bill Bauer from California. We call this series uh, the Dr. Seuss series 
because it's we we Christians we do not have a how to we have a how who and the who is not you so if you want to understand that little riddle then get that series it's right on our website you'll like it it's not a how to you'll love that series okay so if you're leaning on your own understanding, then you, you think you do have to have a how-to. How many how-to books do you have? How-to, how, how am I going to make this work? How am I going to make that work? You know, that's how the world operates. Now, I'm not saying that if your refrigerator goes down and you can't afford somebody to come fix it, you might get on the internet and find out how to, you know, how to fix it. Well, right, that's great. That's the way the world operates. And we're in the world, but we're not of it. So we don't have a how-to in our Christian life. We don't have a how-to. We've got a how-who. We've got Christ within us who said he would teach us all things. Okay. All right. So the Corinthians didn't know that, and they were leaning on their own understanding, and they were getting into a lot of trouble. They didn't have wisdom. They didn't have discernment. They didn't have exactly what we all need in, our, in maturity. So this is what Paul says. He says, your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men. Wow. Your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6. Howbeit, we speak wisdom among them that are perfect. That means complete, or that Christ has been formed in them, that he is a fully matured Christian. We speak wisdom to them that are complete. The Bible calls it perfect. That means that means that Christ be formed in us is what Paul's talking about in Galatians. He labors in faith till Christ be formed in you until you grow up as a mature person, you see. Yet not the wisdom of this world. So it's not just how-tos on how, how to live the Christian life nor the princes of this world, that's the principalities of this world, they'll try to teach you the world's way, certainly they will, that come to naught, that are, that are absolutely have no power whatsoever. But we speak wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. The new man <laughs> is unto our glory. Wow. Just think about that. Let me read that again. Even, even the hidden wisdom. Why was it hidden? You see, God's mind is hidden to them that are still carnal, still operating as if you're just a me trying to live the Christian life the best you can. You see, you're still carnal. So he hides his mind. It doesn't mean that you don't have it. You're not functioning from it, though. You're not living from the mind of Christ. You're, you're trusting in your own understanding. That's why you stumble and fall so much. And then it says this, none of the princes of this world, that means the principalities, uh, the rulers of darkness of this world, none of those princes of this world knew, for had they had known it, they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. Because see, God, through the, through the cross of Christ, was going to bring back into mankind glory, because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, which is really the wisdom of God, which is really the presence of God. That Those are all synonymous. The wisdom of God is the mind of the Spirit, is the presence of God, is um, the uh, mind of Christ. It's all, it's all the same thing, you see. And it's also to our glory. You see, if the princes, if the principalities and powers, they're the ones that... Um, uh, raised their hand against God, uh, against Christ and crucified him. If they had known that by crucifying him, that he would bring glory back to man, they would have never done it. And that's exactly what he's saying here. And then I love this. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things that God hath prepared for them that love him. Oh my goodness, if you love the Lord, and you want his way, you don't want your own way, you don't want your own will, you don't want your own understanding, you want the understanding of the Spirit, you want the mind of Christ, you just simply humble yourself before God and say, thank you, Lord, 
you told me that if I'm a Christian, then I already have your mind. Help me and teach me how to how to function from your mind instead of from my own understanding. You see, if you would dare say that to the Lord, the Holy Spirit, that's why Jesus said the kingdom of God is like these little children. Just come humble yourself as a little child and receive because it says this. The, that same chapter, the end of that chapter in 1 Corinthians verse 15, it says, he that is spiritual judges all things, meaning that we have the discernment. If you're really a spirit person functioning from the mind of Christ and not your own understanding, you see, you're going to have the discernment. You're going to know the difference. And it says, yet he himself is judged of no man. It's pretty hard to truly judge a, a, a spirit person because usually it boomerangs back onto you as soon as you start trying to judge a spirit person. Then it says this, for whom he hath known, for who hath known the mind of the Lord and who hath instructed him, but we have the mind of Christ. He's talking about himself, Paul is, as a fully grown, uh, mature, perfect son of God, man of God, you see. What is perfection anyway? C completeness in Christ. What is completeness? When you know that you're a vessel that can produce nothing of your own, you're a slave. If we're, we're going to read in Romans 6 where it says you were a slave of sin, but now through the cross, you're a slave of righteousness. You've always been a slave of some other, of another spirit that lived inside of us. Can you believe that? You've always been a slave. Bible says so. Bible says so. Wow. You never think of your... A lot of people don't like this. They don't like this because they don't think, well, I haven't... Nothing has told me what to do. I'm my own person. I'm my own... Basically, we're all thinking we're our own God, you see. Even when we're walking separate from who we really are, that is a sense of saying... I don't need you, Holy Spirit, inside me. I don't need Christ in me. I'll be it myself. I'll be a righteous person. I'll do the right thing. I'll, 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 I'll. Do you know what that is? That's trusting in your own flesh, your own understanding, your own ways. That's walking. That is a dysfunctional Christian. You're either going to be honest about yourself or you're going to pretend that you can do it and be fine without the Spirit of God dwelling and walking in you. You're going to think one or the other. So you have to decide. You can be a you you can be a hypocrite all you want to, or you can humble yourself and say, "Look, I do fail most of the time. I want to know what it means to walk in the Spirit. I want to know how to really love and appreciate my humanity instead of always hating myself." I, I want to, because if I hate myself, how am I ever going to appreciate anybody else? I mean, when you really love yourself, you can only love yourself, though, when you know that yourself is joined to Christ and you're a living branch of his spirit. Then you, then you know, and you can love yourself. And you say, well, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And you can say, yes, I truly do have self-appreciation not build yourself up or put yourself down. It's you're just simply available for the Spirit to use. I mean, there's no greater place. And you know that. You've had the Spirit use you in this time or that time. And you've known there's no greater joy than when the Holy Spirit uses you. Well, you know what? You can be used all the time. It doesn't have to be sporadic. It doesn't have to be once in a while. It can be a flow of the Spirit. It can be walking in the Spirit. It can be knowing and loving your God and walking in, in the spirit of who you really are and stop listening to the lies of your old master, which is really Satan. Satan is outside of us. Do you all realize he's speaking to us in first person? And people do say this, and sometimes I say it like that, that we hate ourselves. Well, honestly, it's not you that hates you. It is Satan Put, projecting those thoughts in your mind, making you think it's you that hates you. It's not. He's deceiving you. We have a precious vesselhood. We're a precious human being that God has created to live in. 
and express his love nature through. You are precious before him and you are beloved. You are beloved. He loves you. He gave himself for you that he might indwell you and be your God and you can be his people. So, so what hinders us? What hinders us? Is it pride? Because I'm so proud of all the things that I've accomplished in my life that I can't admit maybe all these things were done by God. Maybe I didn't do them like I thought I did myself at all. You know, the Bible's always talking about people that put pride in the works of their own hands. You know, we Americans are full of pride about the works of our own hands, and Christians are too. Look what I've done. How many people have I helped? How many people? I want to tell you something. When you're operating and living from the mind of Christ, you're practically unconscious of what you're doing. You're, you're not making brownie points about every little thing that you've done right and every little thing you've done wrong. Let me tell you, that's the mind of separation. That's the mind of the person that thinks they're just themselves. And they don't know that they are the expression of the living God, that God lives in them and walks in us. So I ask you, if you have not, if you do not know this liberating secret, if you do not know this truth, humble yourself before God and ask the Lord to show you and to reveal his mind to you. So I'm going to close on that. So thank you so much for joining me and may God richly bless you. Goodbye. I hope that you are being blessed by the liberating secret. If you would like to have for yourself my books, booklets, or any of my TV or radio series, check out our website's bookstore. Our TV shows are also on our YouTube site. And be sure to get the Liberating Secret app for your phone. We have an annual Louisville conference in June, as well as a biannual Women's Retreat at Polly's Island, South Carolina. Come for a weekend or a week of study, fun, fellowship by the ocean. We also have a weekly Bible study. See our website for times and location. My husband and Scott and I would love to come and share the liberating truth to your fellowship, church, or home group. Please call or contact us through the website. If you would like to donate to our ministry, make your checks out to Christ Our Life Ministries Post Office Box 43268, Louisville, Kentucky, 40253. Please pray for us, and we will pray God's very best for you.